Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to be going over the Unit 7 review. So we'll start with the first question, Part A. Find the other five trigonometric functions if cosecant equals negative 6 and cosine of theta is less than 0. All right, so obviously this unit is over trig identities. So we are expected to use trig identities here. All right, so we know that we are going to need to find sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta, uh, cosecant of theta, which is given to us. We know that is negative 6. Secant of theta and cotangent of theta. Alright, so of course, since we already know cosecant of theta is negative 6, and then we know that sine and cosecant are reciprocals of each other. Uh, so using our reciprocal identity, we know that sine of theta is negative one-sixth. All right. Now, typically here, uh, we're always going to need to use a Pythagorean identity. All right. Um, so we're going to want to use one with either sine or one with cosecant. It doesn't matter which one we use. Right, but the more common one here is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. Right, well, I know that sine theta is negative 1 sixth, so sine squared theta is 1 sixth squared. I'll be finding cosine theta, and this is still 1. Negative 1 sixth squared is 1 over 36. So plus cosine squared theta is equal to, I'm just going to make 136 over 36 to give myself a common denominator. We subtract 1 over 36 from both sides, and we get cosine squared theta is equal to 35 over 36. Of course, we just want cosine theta, so we take the square root of both sides, and we get that cosine theta is equal to the square root of 35 over 6. Now, of course you would want to check and make sure that you can't simplify uh, any radicals. In this case we cannot. All right now it does tell us up here that cosine of theta is less than 0. That means that this has to be negative. All right so now we know that cosine of theta is negative square root of 35 over 6. All right now, for secant, of course, we just go ahead and flip that. So we would have negative 6 over the square root of 35. Of course, we have to rationalize, so we get negative 6 root 35 over 35. Also, we would want to be careful here that we can't simplify this at all. Um, of course, negative 6 over 35 can't be simplified, so we're good there. All right, now we need to find uh, either tangent or cotangent. All right, um, it does, there's a bunch of different ways that you could do this using identities. Um, you could use uh, the Pythagorean theorem with tangent squared. You could use the Pythagorean theorem with cotangent squared. You could use the quotient identity um, with sine of uh, the tangent of theta is equal to sine over cosine. You could use the uh, cotangent of theta is equal to cosine over sine. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'll just go ahead and use that tangent of theta is equal to sine of theta over cosine of theta. So we know that sine of theta is negative one-sixth, and we know that cosine of theta uh, is negative square root of 35 over 6. Of course, when we have a fraction divided by a fraction and they have the same denominator, we can just go ahead and cancel those. Of course, a negative over a negative is a positive. All right, so this is 1 over the square root of 35, which is equal to the square root of 35 over 35. All right, so this is the square root of 35 over 35. Right, for cotangent, of course, we just want to flip that. Now, it's much easier to flip 
1 over the square root of 35, uh, because if we flip this, we would then have to rationalize and simplify again. So it's a lot easier to just go ahead and flip this, which would be the square root of 35 over 1, which is just the square root of 35. So we have now found all of our uh, trigonometric functions here. So we are done. All right, part B, uh, simplifying each expression. All right, this is just uh, simplifying using trigonometric identities, of course. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and distribute these first. So tangent x times tangent x is tangent squared x. Tan x times negative secant x is minus tan x secant x. Secant x times tangent x is plus secant x tan x. And then secant x times negative secant x is negative secant squared x. All right, now uh, multiplication is commutative, of course, which means order doesn't matter. So tan x times secant x is the same as secant x times tan x. And since one of these is negative and one of these is positive, these will just cancel out. All right, so now we're just left with tan squared x minus secant squared x. All right, well, one of our uh, Pythagorean identities says that 1 plus tan squared x is equal to secant squared x. So wherever I see secant squared x, I'm allowed to replace it with 1 plus tan squared x. So I will say tan squared x minus, instead of secant, I'm allowed to replace that with 1 plus tan squared x. All right, now do be careful that you put that in parentheses so that you remember to distribute this negative. That's a very common mistake here. All right, so when I do that, we get tan squared x minus 1 minus tan squared x. Well, tan squared x minus tan squared x is 0. They cancel out. So we're simply left with negative 1. All right, over here, 1 minus sine squared theta over cosine uh, theta. All right, we know that uh, we have our Pythagorean identity, again, that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. All right, so I want to make one side of this equation look like this. So all I have to do is subtract sine squared theta from both sides. And when I do, I get cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. All right, so now wherever I see a 1 minus sine squared theta, I'm allowed to replace it with cosine squared theta. So I'll go ahead and do that over here. Instead of 1 minus sine squared theta, I put cosine squared theta. That's over cosine theta. Now do remember that cosine squared theta is really just cosine theta quantity squared, which is the same thing as cosine theta times cosine theta. So one of my cosine thetas up top cancels with my cosine theta in bottom, and I'm left with just cosine theta. All right, here, simplify each expression. All right, um, in this case, we're going to want to put cosecant x as 1 over sine x. So I have sine x times 1 over sine x minus sine x. Now I go ahead and distribute the sine x to both pieces. Sine x times 1 over sine x is sine x over sine x minus sine x times sine x is sine squared x. All right, anything over itself, of course, is just 1. So this is 1 minus sine squared x. All right, well, again, this is actually the exact same as kind of what we have over here, just with x's instead of thetas. Well, wherever I see a 1 minus sine squared, in this case, x, I can replace it with cosine squared x. So this is simply just cosine squared x. Done. All right, and over here with number 4,
cosine cubed theta plus cosine theta times sine squared theta, right? They both, both terms share a cosine theta. So I can go ahead and factor that out. And when I do here, I started with three cosine thetas. I took one out. So I'm left with two. So cosine squared theta plus I took this cosine theta out. So all I'm left with is sine squared theta. Of course, addition is commutative, just like multiplication is. So order does not matter here. So this is the same thing as sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, which we know that's one of our Pythagorean identities. We know that just equals one. So this is simply cosine theta times one, which obviously is just cosine theta. All right, part C wants us to solve each equation on the interval 0 to 2 pi. All right, so basically all of the things on our unit circle. All right, we'll start off pretty basic here. Cosine of x is equal to negative 1. All right, there's no solving or manipulating of this equation that needs to be done. All we have to do is look at our unit circle and say, where is cosine equal to negative 1? Right, cosine is equal to negative 1 at pi. So that's it. We're done with that. Right, number 2 is similar, except all we have to do, uh, first we do have to isolate the trig function here, sine x. So I'll divide both sides by 2, and we will get sine of x is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. Right, again, we just look at our unit circle and we say, okay, where is sine uh, equal to the square root of 3 over 2? Right, that happens at pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. And we are done there. Number 3. Um, a lot of students make the mistake of actually trying to distribute these out first. When we're solving equations, we like factored form, right? Keep in mind that uh, when we have uh, two factors set equal to zero, all we have to do is set each factor equal to zero and solve, right? So when I set secant of x plus 2 equal to zero, I subtract 2 from both sides, and I get secant of x is equal to negative 2, right? When I set tan x minus 1 equal to zero and solve, I get tan x is equal to 1. All right, well, secant is not on my unit circle, but that's okay. All right, um, its reciprocal cosine is. So if secant x is equal to negative 2, then we know cosine of x is equal to negative 1 half. All right, so now we simply ask, where is cosine equal to negative 1 half on my unit circle? All right, and that is going to happen at pi over 3, or sorry, 2 pi over 3, and 4 pi over 3. So we are done there. Now we also have to take a look at tangent and say, okay, where is tangent of x equal to 1? Of course, on our unit circle, tangent is equal to the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate, which is sine divided by cosine. So basically, we're looking for where the x and y coordinate are exactly the same, right? And that happens at pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. All right, so these four solutions are the solutions to my equation. Okay, next one here. Uh, sine x plus cosine x is equal to zero, All right? Um, there's a couple of different ways of thinking of this, right? There's no true algebraic manipulation uh, that we can really do with this, right? Um, if you really wanted to, you could subtract cosine from both sides and say, okay, where is sine x equal to negative cosine of x, All right? So you're just saying, okay, well, on the unit circle, where are they... Uh, the same value, but opposites, right? So one would be negative, one would be positive. All right, well, that is going to occur at uh, 3 pi over 4 
where sine of x is square root of 2 over 2 and cosine of x is negative square root of 2 over 2. Uh, and that will also occur at 7 pi over 4, where sine of x is negative square root of 2 over 2 and cosine is positive square root of 2 over 2. So that takes kind of a little uh, deductive reasoning, no true algebra. Right? You just kind of have to think about it and look at our unit circle. All right, number five here, cosine of x, uh, cosine squared x, rather, equal to one. All right, well, because of this squared, all right, we uh, are definitely going to have to set it equal to zero first. It's kind of just like a quadratic, uh, thinking back to algebra one and two. So I say, okay, cosine squared x minus one uh, is equal to zero. Um, you could actually either change this using... Uh, your Pythagorean identity to sine squared x, all right? Um, or you could just think of this as a difference of perfect squares and factor. So you know, um, that's what I'll do. I'll say, okay, well, this is really cosine theta plus 1 times cosine theta minus 1. Of course, when you have two factors uh, set equal to 0, you set each of them equal to 0 and solve, all right? So we're going to get cosine of theta equal to negative 1, and cosine of theta equal to positive 1. All right, you would still get the uh, same thing if you really just took the square root of both sides of this. That probably would have been the faster way. All right, there's always multiple ways to do these. So we're just saying, okay, on my unit circle, where is cosine negative 1 or positive 1? All right, well, that occurs. All right, at... 0 and pi. All right, our next one here, 2 sine of 3x minus 1 equals 0. All right, remember here, we do not want to mess with this 3x, right? Treat it as it's just a regular x. The most common mistake made here is that people try to kind of get rid of this 3 too early. All right, so we just want to isolate the sine of 3x, the trig function. All right, so first I'm going to add 1, then divide by 2, and we will get sine of 3x is equal to 1 half. Again, ignore this 3 for the time being. Just look at your unit circle and say, okay, where is sine 1 half? All right, sine is 1 half all right, at pi over 6, and... 5 pi over 6. Right, but instead of saying x equals that thing, we say 3x equals. Okay, So now we can go ahead and divide both sides by 3, which is the same as multiplying by 1 third. All right, so when I go ahead and do this, I'm going to get pi over 18 and 5 pi over 18. Uh, a lot of students kind of call it a day here, all right, but we do have to be careful because we do have uh, this in front of my x, right, this coefficient, all right, if we go back to when we were graphing sine and cosine, this is actually my b, right, so a sine of bx, all right, so this is actually going to change my period. All right, so we want to find my period, and for sine and cosine, it's 2 pi divided by b, which in this case is 3. All right, well, just to get a common denominator here, I want it to have a denominator of 18, so I multiply the top and bottom by 6 here, and I get 12 pi over 18. All right, because it wants all solutions between 0 and 2 pi, uh, and the period tells me how often my solutions repeat themselves, Right, I have to add my period as many times as I can until I get um, to 2 pi or larger. So if I add 12 pi over 18 here, I get 13 pi over 18. If I add 12 pi over, th uh, 12 pi over 18 again, I get 25 pi over 18. If I add 12 pi over 18 again, I would get 37 pi over 18, but 37 over 18 is larger than 2, so that's outside of our 0 to 2 pi, so we stop there. 
right, I go down to my solution down here, do the same thing. So if I add 12 pi over 18, I will get 17 pi over 18. If I do it again, I will get 29 pi over 18. Of course, if I do it again, I would get 41 pi over 18, uh, which again is, since 41 over 18 is larger than 2, that's outside of my 0 to 2 pi. So these are my six solutions. All right, so you'll have to be careful whenever your argument of your trig function is not to just x or theta or whatever variable you're talking about. All right, going on to number 7. We have 2 sine squared x minus 3 sine x plus 1. All right, you can use your little u substitution here if you like. So you would have 2u squared uh, minus 3u plus 1. So we would want to factor. Uh, because my leading coefficient is something other than 1, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, the trash can method here. So I take my a times c. That gives me 2. My b is negative 3. So I need to find two numbers whose product is 2 and whose sum is negative 3. That's going to be negative 2 and negative 1 because negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2 and negative 2 plus negative 1 is negative 3. So I'm good here. I want to keep my leading coefficients, which is 2. So I'm going to say 2u minus 2 and 2u minus 1. Uh, this is where I take out the trash. So I look at each factor and say, can I factor something out of here? Uh, in this, I can factor out a 2. So I'm left with u minus 1. With the second one, I can't factor out anything, so it stays. I throw away what I pulled out, and this is my factorization. Of course, I'm not dealing with u's. In this case, I'm dealing with sine x's. So this would factor to sine x minus 1 and 2 sine x minus 1. Of course, those are still equal to 0. When I set each factor equal to 0 and solve, here I will get sine x is equal to 1. And here I would add 1 divided by 2. So sine x is equal to 1 half. Okay, well where is sine equal to 1? Sine is equal to 1 at pi over 2. And here, where is sine equal to 1 half? Sine is equal to 1 half at pi over 6. Uh, and 5 pi over 6. Uh, there was no, uh, you know, nothing uh, other than just x in, uh, in my argument of my trig function here, so I don't have to worry about the period changing and all of that stuff like I did on the last one. So I'm done. All right, here, 2 cosine squared x equals cosine x. All right, uh, again, it's going to look like a quadratic. Um, so I'm definitely going to want to subtract cosine x from both sides. All right, well, here now both terms have a cosine, so I can factor out a cosine. So if I factor out a cosine x, here I'm just left with 2 cosine x. Uh, here I took this whole thing out, so I just need to put my 1 there as a placeholder. Again, I have two factors set equal to zero, so I set them each equal to zero. So cosine x is equal to zero. Uh, and then when I set this equal to zero and solve, I add one, divide by two. So cosine of x is equal to one half. All right, now of course I just look at my unit circle again and say, where is cosine of x equal to zero? Cosine of x is equal to zero um, at pi over two and 3 pi over 2. And where is cosine of x equal to 1 half? That happens at pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Again, the argument of my trig function here, cosine x, um, didn't have any coefficient in front of my variable, so I don't have to worry about my period changing. So those are my solutions. All right. Let's look at the next page. All right, so we're kind of continuing on with the uh, solving trick.
trigonometric equations. All right, however, this time it wants us to find all solutions. So that's when we have to find that general form. Remember, there'll be infinite of them. All right, so here, all right, I just say cosine of 2x is equal to negative square root of 2 over 2. Okay, well, where does that occur? All right, again, ignore this 2x for the time being. All right, so uh, cosine is negative square root of 2 over 2. That happens at 3 pi over 4. And it happens again at 5 pi over 4. All right, well, now we can go ahead and divide by 2, which is the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. All right, so here we're going to get x is equal to 3 pi over 8. And here we will get x is equal to 5 pi over 8. All right, now normally we would just say um, plus or minus 2n pi. Really, we just want to say plus or minus n times the period, all right, which for cosine and sine, uh, your standard period is 2 pi. For tangent, it's 1 pi, right? However, we do have a variable in front of my, uh, or I'm sorry, a coefficient in front of my variable, all right? So our period is going to change here. So my period, again, for cosine or sine is 2 pi divided by b, which in this case my b is 2. So those, of course, will cancel. My period is just pi. So all I have to do here is say plus or minus n times my period, which is pi. And this will give me all um, infinite solutions. And this is called the general form of the solution. All right, number two will work very similar. All right, so again, ignore this x over 2 until the end, right? All we want to ask ourselves first is, okay, well, where is sine negative 1 half? All right, well, sine is negative 1 half uh, at 7 pi over 6. And again, at 11 pi over 6. Right, well, now we can go ahead and uh, solve for x here. So I can just multiply both sides by 2. Of course, this 2 over 6 will reduce, right, to 1 over 3. So this really just tells me, okay, x is equal to 7 pi over 3. And here I get x is equal to... Uh, 11 pi over 3, sorry. All right, again, um, because I have something other than just x in my argument of my trig function, my period is going to change. Uh, do be mindful that x over 2 is the same thing as 1 half x, right? So in this case, my b is 1 half. So my period is going to equal 2 pi divided by one half. Okay, well dividing by one half is the same thing as multiplying by two. So this is actually four pi. So here I just say, okay, plus or minus four n pi, plus or minus four n pi, and that will cover all of my infinite solutions. All right, now I come over here to uh, number three, two cosine squared x plus three cosine x plus one equals zero. It's already equal to zero. It looks like a quadratic. All right, so if you want to uh, use your u substitution trick here, that's perfectly fine. Um, my leaning coefficient is something other than one. Uh, so I'm going to use my trash can method here. A times C is two, B is three. My two numbers that multiply together give, to give me two and add together to give me three are, of course, just two and one. So I have two u plus two and two u plus one. I can pull a two out of here, give me u plus one. I can't do anything here, so it stays. I throw that away. Of course, again, I'm not talking about u's. I'm talking about cosine x's. So this factors to cosine x plus 1 and 2 cosine x plus 1. 
course, those are both still equal to zero. When we have multiple factors set equal to zero, you set each one equal to zero and solve. So we get cosine of x is equal to negative one here, and cosine of x is equal to negative one half here. All right, well, where is cosine equal to negative one? That occurs at pi. Where is cosine of x equal to negative one half? Right, that occurs at 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. All right, again, I'm still trying to find all solutions. All right, um, here uh, there was no coefficient in front of my variable in my trig function, so um, my standard period applies here, which for cosine is 2 pi, so I just say plus or minus 2 n pi to all of my solutions. And I'm good. And finally, number four. All right, well, here we have two different trig functions. We have a sine squared and we have a cosine. All right, so we need to use one of our Pythagorean identities uh, to make sure that they are the same. All right, we are always going to change the squared term. All right, and we know that sine squared, in this case we're using t's, so sine squared t plus cosine squared t is equal to 1. All right, so if we want to replace sine squared t, um, I solve for it, so I subtract cosine squared t from both sides, and we get sine squared t is equal to 1 minus cosine squared t. So of course, wherever I see a sine squared t, I'm now allowed to replace it with a 1 minus cosine squared t. So I'll do that over here. I have 2. Instead of sine squared t, I'll replace that with 1 minus cosine squared t, minus 3 cosine t, and that's still equal to 0. Now I need to go ahead and distribute uh, this 2. So when I do that, I will get 2 minus 2 cosine squared t, minus 3 cosine t is equal to 0. All right, now if I rewrite this in standard form, I would have negative 2 cosine squared t minus 3 cosine t plus 2 equals 0. Uh, I know I'm going to have to be factoring this, and I don't like to factor negative numbers, uh, well, with a negative uh, leading coefficient, that is. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply everything by negative 1, both sides. Of course, 0 times negative 1 stays 0, so it doesn't affect that side. So this then will become 2 cosine squared t plus 3 cosine t minus 2 is equal to 0. So again, I'm going to use my trash can method here. So I have negative 4 and 3. All right, so I'm going to have a 4 and negative 1. So when I do that, I keep my leading coefficient. I will have 2u plus 4 and 2u minus 1. Uh, so I can pull a 2 out here and get u plus 2. And I can't do anything here, 2u minus 1. Throw that away. Of course, again, I'm not talking about u's. I'm talking about cosine t's. So this is going to be cosine t plus 2 and 2 cosine t minus 1. Again, multiple factors set equal to 0. Set each of them equal to 0 and solve. So here I will get uh, cosine of t equals negative 2 and cosine of t is equal to 1 half. Cosine on our unit circle goes from negative 1 to 1 so it will never be negative 2. So here there's no solution. Here, cosine of t is equal to 1 half, right? That occurs at pi over 3, and again at 5 pi over 3. Um, again, we are trying to look for all solutions here. Um, there's no, uh, nothing other than my standard t here with my trig function, so I don't have to worry about my period changing. So again, just plus or minus 2n pi plus or minus 2n pi, and here are my solutions.
Okay. So now we will look at the next section here, part E. All right, so here we have 2 sine of 15 degrees times cosine of 15 degrees. All right, um, if you'll notice, uh, that looks a lot like uh, 2 uh, sine u cosine u which is our double angle formula that we went over on Monday. All right, so this is actually just equal to two, uh, I'm sorry, times the sine of two u. Well, in this case, my u is 15 degrees. So this just equals the sine of two times 15 which obviously is just the sine of 30 degrees. So we can simply look at our unit circle and figure out what is the sine of 30 degrees. And that's just one half. So we're done there. All right, over here, all right, this will actually look uh, a lot like uh, sine u cosine v plus cosine u sine v, right? Which this is equal to uh, the sine of u plus v, right? So in this case, this would just be the sine of 80 plus 10, which is obviously the sine of 90 degrees. All right, which is just one. All right, here we have cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So now we're talking about uh, the difference formulas of cosine. So this looks a lot like cosine u, cosine v, plus sine u, sine v. All right, and that is equal to cosine of u minus v. So in that case, this whole thing is equal to the cosine of 115 minus 85, which is equal to the cosine of 30 degrees. So we look at the unit circle and say, what is cosine at 30 degrees? And that is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. All right, similarly here, this looks a lot like the tan u plus tan v over 1 minus tan u times tan v. Right, and this just equals the tangent of u plus v. So this would equal the tangent of 25 plus 20 which is obviously equal to the tangent of 45 degrees. Again, from our unit circle, this is just 1. Done. All right, so that's basically just using our double angle and sum and difference formulas uh, and going backwards with them. All right, let's look at the calculator section here. All right, so it says given that sine of u is equal to 11 over 61 and that u is between pi over 2 and pi and that cosine of v is equal to negative 40 over 41 and that v is between pi and 3 pi over 2, find the exact value of each of the following. Okay, so for our different sum and difference formulas here for sine and cosine, we're going to need sine of u, cosine of u, and sine of v, cosine of v, and that's for both of these. And for this one down here, I'm going to need tangent of u and tangent of v. All right now, obviously, I don't have all of those pieces, so I'm going to have to find them. All right. So first, I'll look at angle u. It tells me that u is between pi over 2 and pi. And that means that I'm in the second quadrant. So 
So there's some angle u. Sine, of course, is opposite over hypotenuse. So I have to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So a squared plus 11 squared equals 61 squared. So subtract 11 squared from both sides and take the square root of both sides and we'll get a is equal to the square root of 61 squared minus 11 squared. All right, so we look at our handy dandy calculator here and we say the square root of 61 squared minus 11 squared and we get 60. All right, so we know that a is equal to 60. All right, um, now I'm going to the left here from my origin. All right, so I know that this actually has to be negative 60. Okay, so now from here I can get all of my missing pieces, right? I have sine of u. I can now easily get cosine of u because that is adjacent over hypotenuse. So negative 60 over 61. And I can get my tangent of u which is opposite over adjacent, so that's 11 over negative 60. All right now I similarly want to look at angle V. It tells me that V is between pi and 3 pi over 2, so I know that I am in the third quadrant. So there's my angle V. All right, uh, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. All right, the hypotenuse is negative ne is never negative and we know that from the origin coming from the left, so my 40 is what has to be negative there. All right, again I'm going to have to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. All right, so negative 40 squared plus b squared is equal to 41 squared. So if I subtract negative 40 squared and then take the square root of both sides, b is equal to the square root of 41 squared minus negative 40 squared. And do make sure that when you have a negative number, you put it in parentheses here. So many of you do not, which causes you to obviously get an incorrect answer. All right, but again, if we go ahead and use our calculator here, we can say the square root of 41 squared minus negative 40 squared and we get 9. Okay, so b is equal to 9 which means over here is 9. Again from the origin I'm going to the left which makes this negative and I'm coming down which also makes that negative. All right, um, I have cosine of v so I need sine of v which is opposite over hypotenuse, so negative 9 41sts, and tangent of v is opposite over adjacent, so a negative over a negative is a positive, so that's just 9 over 40. All right, well now I have all of my pieces that I need to do all of these, okay? So my difference formula for sine, right, is sine u cosine v minus cosine u sine v. All right, well, now I know what all of these pieces are. Sine of u is 11 over 61. All right, cosine of v is negative 40 over 41. Minus cosine of u is negative 60 over 61. And sine of v is negative 9 over 41. All right, of course, this is the on the calculator section for a reason. We can just go ahead and do this right in our calculator. So we say 11 over 61 times negative 40 over 41. minus uh, negative 60 over 61. It's 
times negative 9 over 41. And we get negative 980 over 2501. And that's it. Okay, so now we do similar for cosine of u plus v. My sum formula for cosine of u plus v is cosine u cosine v minus sine u sine v. Again, we just plug in all of our missing pieces. So cosine of u is negative 60 over 61. Cosine of v is negative 40 over 41. And then we subtract sine of u, which is 11 over 61, times sine of v, which is negative 9 over 41. So again, we just plug all of this into our calculator exactly as we see it. So we're going to get 60 over negative 60 over 61 times negative 40 over 41 minus 11 over 61 times negative 9 over 41. And we get 24.99 over 25.01. So 24.99 over 25.01. And we're good. Right, and last but not least, tangent of u plus v. All right, this is equal to tan u plus tan v over 1 minus tan u times tan v. All right, so this is equal to um, negative 11 over 60 plus 9 over 40 all over 1 minus negative 11 over 60 times 9 over 40. Alright, so again, we do this right in our calculator. Going to be lots of fractions going on here, though. Alright, so... Alright, so here I will say negative 11 over 60 plus 9 over 40 over 1 minus negative 11 over 60 times 9 over 40 and we get 100 over 24.99 And we are done. All right, next. All right, use a calculator to solve each equation on the interval 0 to 2 pi. Approximate any solutions to three decimal places. All right, so here we're solving solution, or we're solving equations again. All right, but now we're just allowed to use our calculator when needed. All right, so again, I'm going to set this equal to 0 and solve. I'm going to have 2 cosine squared x minus 4 cosine x uh, plus 1 is equal to 0. All right, so let's see if this thing factors. So 2 times 1 is 2, and negative 4. So, no, there's definitely not going to be any numbers that multiply together to give us 2, but add together to give us negative 4. Right, that's impossible. All right, so... 
uh, this thing is not factorable, right? So uh, if we kind of think of this as uh, 2u squared minus 4u plus 1, all right, we say, well, um, how else can we solve quadratic equations? Well, we can do it using the quadratic formula, all right? So if we do that, we're going to have x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2 times a. All right, so uh, we go ahead and do this. All right, and we're going to get 4 plus or minus all right, this would be uh, 16 minus 8, which would be the square root of 8, all over 4. All right, and the square root of 8 can be simplified. All right, that would be um, uh, 2 square roots of 2, all over 4. So 2 goes into all of these evenly, right? So we can have 2 plus the square root of 2, all over 2. All right, now... Right, again, we're not really thinking about x's here. I guess really this would be u, since we have our u's. So I should do that for consistency's sake. All right, but we're not really talking about u's, right? We're talking about cosine x's. All right, so cosine x is equal to 2 plus the square root of 2 over 2, and cosine x is equal to 2 minus the square root of 2 over 2. And that just comes from this plus or minus, right? Plus or minus, plus or minus, plus or minus. All right, so we have to do it once with the plus and once with the minus. All right, well, now we have this mess, but that's okay. Um, we can just go ahead and use our inverse cosine here. So x is going to equal the inverse cosine of this and x will equal the inverse cosine of this. All right, so what we will do the inverse cosine of uh, 2 plus, well, I'm actually going to make sure that I can look at this fraction, so 2 plus the square root of 2 all over 2. Right, and that says uh, domain error, All right, which makes sense, right? Because 2 plus some positive number over 2, that's going to be bigger than 1, right? We can't do uh, inverse cosine of something that's not between negative 1 and 1. So here we're going to get no solution from this part. Right, and then I can do it again with minus and we get 1.27. Let's see what mode I'm in here. Right, I'm in radian mode, so I'll go ahead and do that again in degree mode and get uh, 72.96, uh, so 73.0 rounded to the nearest tenth. Okay, so there's one of our solutions. All right, we're actually going to have another one, all right? Um, and this is kind of the, the tough part about these, all right? So we know that cosine, all right, is positive in the first and fourth quadrants. So if I have uh, 73 degrees here, all right, then negative 75, or sorry, negative 73 degrees would also give me that same value. Of course, that's not between 0 and 2 pi. Oop, it is between 0 and 2 pi, so I should have done that in rating in the first time. And when I did that, that was 1.274. So 1.274 radians. All right, so if this is 1.274,
then this would be negative 1.274. Uh, Alright, now of course that's not between 0 and 2 pi, but that's fine. All we have to do is take negative 1.274 and add 2 pi to it to get that coterminal angle, 5.009. So that will be our second solution. And that's usually the most difficult thing for students to be able to do. Okay, let's look at this other one over here. All right? Um, and this, again, because our arguments are different, all right, is going to be uh, a lot more difficult uh, to do algebraically. In fact, we can't even do it algebraically. So let's just let the calculator do it for us. All right, so I'm going to go to y equals. And I'm going to say sine of 0.5x. And that's going to be my uh, left-hand side. So I put that in y1. In y2, I put this on the right-hand side there. So 3 cosine of 1.5x. All right, uh, I'm going to get my window. It says from 0 to 2 pi. All right, and uh, let's just say probably negative 5 to 5 should suffice. I'm just guessing, but we'll see. Alright, so as we can see there, we have three points of intersection, which means we're going to have three solutions. Right? And if you do uh, ever do something like this on the test, right, show me, right, say, okay, well, I put this in Y1, I put this in Y2, right, and then just say, okay, there's three intersections. Right, this is the equivalent of showing me your work when you use your calculator. Many of you do not like to do that at all. All right, so if we go ahead and second trace, go to intersect, we can go to the first one over here. Enter, enter, enter. All right, and really we are only solving for x here, so you only need to give me the x coordinate. So x is equal to 0 0.946. Right, do it again go to the second point of intersection. And we get 3.367. And do it one more time. .113. And those are all of our solutions. Alright, part H. Given that sine of u is equal to 15 over 17, and that u is between pi over 2 and pi, find the exact value of each of the following. All right, so knowing that u is between pi over 2 and pi, that tells me that I'm in the second quadrant. All right, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. All right, so again, I would say a squared plus 15 squared is equal to 17 squared. All right, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Subtract 15 squared from both sides and take the square root. So, let me say 
15 square root of 17 squared minus 15 squared, and that is 8. So this is 8, but as we can see, we're coming to the left from my origin here, so this has to be negative 8. All right, so now uh, I'm given sine, so now I know that cosine of u is equal to negative 8 over 17, and that tangent of u is equal to 15 over negative 8. So now I can use that for all of my uh, double angle formulas here, all right? So double angle formula for cosine, uh, do remember that we have three of them. So you can use whichever one you want, right? It doesn't really matter. Um, since we have sine and cosine, it's irrelevant. Uh, I'll just go ahead and use the one that says that this is equal to cosine squared u minus sine squared u. So if cosine u is negative 8 over 17, then this is negative 8 over 17 squared. And sine u is 15 over 17, so sine squared u is 15 over 17 squared. All right, so we'll use our calculator, and we say negative 8 over 17 squared minus 15 over 17 squared we get negative 161 over 289. So we are done there. All right, sine of 2u is equal to 2 sine u cosine u. So that's simply equal to 2 times sine of u is 15 over 17. And cosine of u is negative 8 over 17. So we plug that into our calculator as well. And we get negative 240 over 289. Finally, tangent of 2u, we know that this is equal to 2 times the tangent of u over 1 minus tan squared u. So plug this in using my tan u, and we will get 2 times negative 15 eighths over 1 minus negative 15 eighths squared. All right, so now we plug that into our calculator. And we get 240 over 161. And that is it. We are done. And the last but not least. Use the trigonometric solution, x equals 6 sine theta, to write the expression, the square root of 36 minus x squared, as a trigonometric function of theta. Right, well, where theta is between 0 and pi over 2. That just means I'm in the first quadrant, so everything works out nicely. All right, so I'm starting with the square root of 36 minus x squared, which is given to me. It tells me what x is equal to. When x is equal to something, uh, it's interchangeable. So this is minus uh, 6 times sine theta squared. Right? Do you remember when you plug things in for x, you put them in parentheses. 
6 times sine theta squared is simply 36 sine squared theta. All right, again, don't be that student that tries to tell me that you can just take the square root of both of these pieces right now. Whenever it's, you know, whenever we have terms broken up by a plus or minus here, that does not work, right? That only works with multiplication and division, not addition and subtraction. So what I'm going to have to do here first is factor out a 36, and that will leave me with 1 minus sine squared theta. Well, hopefully, all right, that should ring some bells. Right, if we have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equal to 1, right, if I want one side of my equal sign to look like this, I simply subtract sine squared theta from both sides. So we get cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. Okay, well now because these two things are equal, they are interchangeable. So where I see 1 minus sine squared theta, I'm allowed to replace it with cosine squared theta. Okay, well now, all right, I'm not hindered by that plus or minus in here. Now I do have multiplication, so I am allowed to take the square root of both pieces. The square root of 36 is 6. The square root of cosine squared theta is just cosine theta. And we are done.